we're going to start this tutorial with a brain and a heart. It's almost a metaphor for life, you young people. But actually, this isn't about the heart today. It's about the output of the heart. And I want to remind you before we go any further that our heart, here's yours metaphorically represented, it is emitting and ejecting blood. And of course, from the aorta here, which we've sliced, we have got a certain amount of blood that's leaving here. And of course, typically it's going to be going on to the rest of the body. It's going to go on to the working muscles, whatever it happens to be. And the main point I want to get across to you first of all is where that blood is destined for. What's the destination for that blood? And the big idea of this is that the blood is the delivery mechanism of resources around the body. You've studied in biology, for example, that... Um, multicellular organisms like human beings they need delivery networks to get resources to all cells right well of course that's what's the blood what the blood's doing so where is this blood going to once it departs the heart and we're going to look first of all at rest can be meant to be yellow we're going to first of all look at rest conditions at rest where is this blood going so first things first i want to consider the notion of, let me use a, a bit less of a dark color than that one i, I want to consider the notion of, of other organs and let me be clear what we mean by this we are talking about other organs being the liver the kid kidneys the skin the brain how much of this blood of the stroke volume leaving the heart per minute cardiac output how much of it is going to these collective organs in other words other than the muscles and i'm going to stress to you that at rest this is 80 to 85 percent now if you consider there's about five liters of blood at rest now we've got, you can calculate that if you want to, we've got that notion of about four litres of that is going to, um, is going to four to 4.25 litres is going to other organs, not the muscles. And if we then consider the muscles, and specifically I want to consider the working muscles, we can determine that some bunch of this is going to those muscles. And we're saying here it's 15 to 20%. Now you might be thinking, well, at rest, what are the working muscles? Well, they're your postural muscles. They're your breathing muscles. They're, for example, the muscles in your neck that hold up the posture of your head. These are working. They are respiring and they're doing that work. Now, this is where life gets interesting. We'll look at the how of this in a second. What happens during exercise? Now, I am going to mention exercise generically and of course the more it moves towards maximal the more this would be the case so if we look at the other organs now we're going to argue that they are going to re receive in the region of 20 percent of that blood okay so from 80 to 85 percent the vast majority during exercise now they're going to receive as little as 25 uh, 20 percent and our working muscles, let's say our rectus femoris muscles, our gastrocnemius, as we're running, that's going to receive 80%. So this blood here, which is departing our, our left ventricle and going out of the aorta during exercise, it's going from it's going from 20% at rest to 80% of it being, of being delivered to muscles. So therefore, we must ask the question, how does that happen? Okay, and there's actually two stages to how we're gonna answer that. The first one is that we have blood vessels who are specialized in the uh, in the achievement of this. So if I'm just gonna to switch to here and I'm gonna go into my circle little, I, what I'm gonna do here for you folks, I'm gonna draw a blood vessel and I want you to be aware that this blood vessel here, as I draw it in, this blood vessel here, here's its outer layer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw this little bit here. This is the muscle. And we're going to do one more tiny little bit. And this is going to be like the inner layer. Please notice the inner layer is not actually green. But the point I want to make to you folks is that if I fill this layer up here, that layer there, that layer there, that is what we would describe as smooth muscle. Let me use a different color to annotate that. That there is smooth muscle. Okay. So that smooth muscle has a capacity to vasodilate and it has a capacity to vasoconstrict, okay? So if you consider, and by the way, if the level of constriction dilation, how tight the muscle is, this is what we refer to as vasomotor tone, the level of that, okay? Vasomotor tone, it's a nice word for you to include. Now, the point I want to make is that, of course, when the when the smooth muscle vasodilates, it relaxes and moves outwards in this direction. What that means then is that the lumen becomes wider 
and that wider lumen has a lower resistance to blood flow and blood will flow through that passageway more it have a higher tendency to do so so can you recognize that these arterioles which means nothing more than a smaller artery can you recognize that these arterioles at rest leading to the other uh, other organs are vasodilated well, what about here to the working muscles? Well, what we'd find here is they would have a higher level of constriction. So if I was to just bring my circle tool back in for a second, if I was just to bring my circle tool back, where's it gone? <laughs> and there it is. And I was to say, right, okay, we're gonna put that, we're gonna put that here and we're gonna sort of bring it in. What we'd be saying now is that we would now have, I didn't mean to do that, we would, just bear with me a second for I didn't actually draw that one out so let me draw that in there we go so let me draw that in and then I'm going to fill that up so what we're saying now is that that smooth muscle has now contracted inwards so effectively what's happened there is the smooth muscle has constricted inwards the lining of course would go with it and now we've got effectively a smaller lumen we've got a greater resistance to blood flow and therefore we've got vasoconstriction so what we're saying here is that this would be an example of vasoconstriction now, when we start to exercise, and I'll explain how this happens in a second, exactly the opposite happens. We get vasoconstriction leading to the other organs, increasing pressure, decreasing blood flow, and we get vasodilation to the working muscles. So more of cardiac output can, can be distributed or redistributed to that environment. And that simply happens through the dilation and constriction of these arterioles. Now, that's all well and good, but there's another side to the story as well. And that is that these arterioles, they lead somewhere. And effectively, these arterioles lead to capillary beds. So imagine that this is an arterial bringing blood in this way. Here's our capillary bed going in here, and then it kind of branches into all kinds of uh, branches here in the actual capillary bed. And then eventually, these capillaries, they deoxygenate. And then over here now, we're getting effectively, we're getting the leading in of this blood now into into what we call a venule, and now a deoxygenated blood leaving. Now notice here that what we've got is we've got a tissue, we've got a capillary bed, we've got a capillary bed, and of course what's happening is that the oxygen of the oxygenated blood is being dropped off at the actual capillary bed of let's say the liver, of let's say the muscle, of let's say the skin. But this is the really important point folks. These capillaries have circular muscles around them, here, 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 here here, here. Now what the way this works is, if these circular muscles, if they constrict inwards, then what happens is our blood flow, all it can do is go through the central avenue through here and then out and back through the through the, the venule to the veins and then back to the heart. In other words, we get far less exchange taking place here because the blood is shunted through. Okay, the blood is shunted through. And this happens, these circular muscles here, these are called pre-capillary sphincter muscles. They're circular, hence the word sphincter. You probably know that there's other sphincter muscles in the body, at the bum hole, for example, around your eyes, for example. They're circular muscles. They can effectively constrict and dilate. But of course, what's happening here then is that effectively, these ones here would block off. It would block, 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 and the blood will simply run through the, the what's called the central uh, capillary rather than the peripheral capillaries, and that pushes the blood around faster. So that is actually the, the arterioles and precapillary sphincter is how we do this is how we do that all well and good now James why on earth did you have a brain at the top you haven't even mentioned it yet well the point I want to make about the brain is a very very simple one we have what's referred to as a vasomotor control center here we're going to call it the VCC vasomotor control center and of course it is positioned in your medulla oblongata and if you've looked at the control of heart rate you've probably already got a good idea of what's going on here now what happens is that this system if i was to draw let's say an, uh, an arterial down here this has the capacity to do what we call sympathetic stimulation and it has the capacity to do parasympathetic stimulation of that arterial or precapillary sphincter sympathetic and what that means is that the sympathetic stimulation effectively 
it will increase vasomotor tone. It will cause the arteriole to squeeze inwards. Whereas parasympathetic stimulation will cause vasodilation. So it's actually this vasomotor control center which is controlling the level of vasomotor tone in these areas. And the point I wanna to make to you again is that the information that this VCC receives, they tend to be or is of neural nature. So this is gonna be coming from chemoreceptors telling the VCC, receptors, telling the VCC that let's say pH has gone down and exercise is occurring. It's gonna be receiving information from baroreceptors saying that blood pressure uh, has risen and that exercise is happening. And it's gonna receive information also from proprioceptors uh, in the muscle and the tendon saying that muscle tension and tendon tension is increased and exercise is happening. Or indeed it's ended. And therefore sympathetic during exercise and parasympathetic during um, recovery can happen to the working muscles. Now, of course, it reverses the other way around when we stop exercising. So that is the how of vascular shunt and vasomotor control. But just be reminded that we get this redistribution. We get this redistribution of blood as a result of the vasoconstriction, vasodilation of precapillary sphincters and arterioles leading to the relative uh, working muscles or areas of activity and inactivity. Thanks.